they want to model a child's behaviors and values. And how do they do that? By centering their entire focus on, well, everything starts at, at the classroom level. I want to refer people to an entire podcast I did on social emotional learning a few months ago. Our moderators can uh, put a link to that in the chat where I just give a crash course on what is social emotional learning. But this is how the critical social theories are being brought in, you know, as a as a Trojan horse into the, the public yep. schools. So talk to us really briefly about about social emotional learning and what that looks like. Yeah, I mean, social emotional learning uh, was developed by CASEL, C-A-S-E-L, the Collaborative for Academic Social and Emotional Learning. Uh, they are like, you know, the, the organization that has put all of this together. Um, and when you go under their, you know, their website and you download some of their material, um, it really shows what the intent of social emotional learning is all about. Uh, they want to model a child's behaviors and values. And how do they do that? By centering their entire focus on, well, everything starts at, at the classroom level. And then after that, it goes to, round, you know, the, the second, you know, circle after the classroom. And then the third circle after that is finally the family. So they have completely upended uh, and turned upside down uh, what you and I believe that it, the primary caregivers and, um, you know, the responsible for growing our, our children spiritually um, and, you know, physically, emotionally, everything uh, is the parents. They put us a distant third. Um, and so they are trying to model that behavior, that worldview, the underlying uh, principles um, and so here, here's kind of how it looks like when it's played out in the classroom. And I think a lot of parents have gotten to view this because of, you know, the pandemic and everything went going virtual. Um, and I got to see the same thing. Uh, in fact, at my son's uh, school district, uh, when he was in sixth grade, what the teacher did was at the start of every single day, they would log on and the first 15 minutes was their social emotional learning time. Although social emotional learning is just, um, you know, in, it, it's incorporated in every aspect, uh, every subject matter, every category, uh, mathematics, history, science, it, it's all dovetailed in there. Uh, but this teacher did, you know, just 15 minutes and it started off by asking a lot of questions very invasive questions. How do you feel this morning? Why do you feel this way? Um, and then what does a teacher do? They start providing resources on how to, you know, support a child because SEL is very about supporting the whole child. And it's almost it like a quasi, I call it pop psychology intervention. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, so the, the teacher starts playing psychologist almost you they're, know? they're a therapist right now yeah um and so they got to the topic of gender identities and sexual orientation a topic that should only be taught under cse and health class for those two weeks out of the year but no sel brings all of those kind of topics and so the way that they brought it in was well we need to celebrate our differences and we need to affirm our differences and I've been discipling my son to know whenever these kind of code words come up, uh, he comes and he tells me, hey, you know, the teacher used this word today. So I immediately emailed uh, my son's teacher and I said, hey, can I have the copy of the curriculum that was used today to talk about celebrating differences? So I get this 18 page, you know, PowerPoint presentation and I'm looking through it and I'm like, OK, these two slides here they are completely wrong. No, you are not teaching my child this stuff. So I sent that back to her and CC the principal. And I said, can you please show me uh, what ed code and what school policy allows you to teach this topic outside of CSE in a health class to a sixth grader under the SEL curriculum? Mm -hmm. 
And all of a sudden I get the principal calling me back. Oh, Mr. Roscoe, um, we're going to look into this. And, you know, we're always going to look into yeah. things. Correct. It drives me crazy. They're going to yeah. look into it. All right. And, and sure enough, I, I stayed on top of them and I found out that there is no school policy and there is no ed code forcing them to teach that. So then I asked them, why are you teaching that then to my sixth grader? And they're like, well, um, we're going to remove this from, from our future curriculum. So, you know, I'm, I'm happy that they removed it for future, you know, grades that are going to come through the sixth grade and, and do, do that SEL curricula. But, you know, everybody else that was there in my son's classroom got it. And, and they were being told that if you're not celebrating other people's differences, you're just, you're just a mean person. You're going to become that bully on the playground. And, and that is so evil. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I gotta think, be kind. Yeah. yeah, I think I think too. Uh, like my friend in Portland, what they did to her daughter is they give her these what are called health surveys, and um, when my friend inquired, like, well, who looks at these results? Where do these go? You know, because it's attached to her daughter's student ID number, so the school would know what her daughter's answers are, and you know, then it seems like there's the potential for, um, you know, children to get targeted by teachers or school counselors, you know, if they're having certain struggles that they could provide interventions that the parents aren't even aware of or know know that that is happening for the child. Definitely. There's, um, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah, So here's what's happening right now. So the, the, the amount of data that SEL curricula providers are collecting off of our children is, is absolutely atrocious. That is then being fed to school uh, counselors, school site counselors. And what our school districts are doing right now in California is that they are now partnering with these top medical um, you know, hospitals. For example, here in Orange County, Chalk Hospital, very renowned for Uh, you know, children's services, right? And they now have opened up a, you know, transgender clinics and they are the ones providing both the therapeutic, um, you know, interventions for our children in our school district. And then these children become their clients who then starting off from the smaller psychological therapeutics get moved on to further and further where if they question their gender or their sexuality, then all right, well, we, we have the, the hormones, you know, the hormone blockers, puberty blockers, and then getting on to, um, you know, all the way out to genital mutilation and, you know, and things like that. So it's, it's a whole kind of life cycle, very well connected.